Good. Good evening and welcome to what's going to be an unusual programme. In a moment, we shall be bouncing ourselves uh, into orbit via a satellite and we'll be landing in Los Angeles, where David Bowie is waiting to talk to us and to sing to us. Later, we'll be coming a little more down to earth with the writer and the Tom and Jerry fan, Kingsley Amis. But first, David Bowie, the boy who was born in Brixton in 1947 and who, after one or two false starts, launched himself on one of the most amazing careers ever known in the pop musical world. His meteoric rise to fame almost equaled that of the mythical character Ziggy Stardust, featured on his records. His admirers called him a prophet, a demigod, and a superman. His critics said he was simply a hoaxer and a charlatan, but his fans adored him and copied his outrageous dress, and some of them to the extent of dyeing their hair orange, just like his. But nearly two years ago, he left these shores for America, where he has lived in retirement from the glitter of the pop musical world. Earlier this year, he starred in a film in Mexico, and will be having a sneak preview of a bit of that film a little bit later. But more important than that, David Bowie has an announcement to make. Let's now go over live by satellite to beautiful downtown Burbank in Los Angeles. Are you there, David Bowie? Yes. Last time we, we met on the air, you were sitting in this studio at this side, and you had a very elegant earring hanging from either your left or right ear, I can't remember. Do you remember that? How are you, Russell? It's nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to see you, Devin. You look well. What colour is your Thank hair? You. Which bit? The, the, the centre bit at the top, above where your nose would be. Well, it's, what colour does it look? Well, it looks like a bit of something out of the end of Straw Dogs. Something out of the end of Straw Dogs. Right, right. Now, you've got an announcement to make to us all, David, haven't you? You're, you're changing your plans for the future, and you've got something up your sleeve for 1976. Yes, um, I'm touring, but I'm in, I'm coming back to England in May to uh, play shows and and uh, look at you and look at England well, you know, and uh, be be there, be English again. Well, as always, but you, English in England. You know, you you haven't your accent, your voice, your method of yeah. speech has not changed. You've been away for two years. Yeah. Does that mean you've been locked away somewhere? Yes, I don't talk to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but do people talk to you? I've heard it rumoured, yes. <laughs> now, wh when you come back to England to sing... Well, I've always had this thing in my ear, so it's been difficult to hear them. But people could shout into your other ear, couldn't they? Yes. Right. Now, when you come back to England, you're not presumably coming back with the glamoury, glittery, ziggy stardust thing, are you? Uh-huh. Are you, are you coming back as that? I don't. I haven't. I don't know yet. I haven't uh, even worked on it. So you, I think it'll probably. Hmm? You, you it'll be a lot more spontaneous. What? You, you haven't planned your wardrobe. You haven't planned a, a figure. You haven't planned an image, whatever that may mean. I. I think the image I may adopt may well be uh, me. I'm sort of. Sort of. Uh, uh, inventing me at the moment. You mean reinventing you, yourself? Yes, self-invented. <laughs> From the waist upwards. Yes, jolly mm. uncomfortable. Is it? Now then, yeah. how are you? But you really have no simple idea about what you're going to wear. I mean, are you going to wear a little suit, a straight suit, or are you going to be? I know what songs I'm going to sing, which is the most important thing. Are they new? But uh, nothing else, no. Are there new songs? And I know the kind of musicians I'm bringing back. Uh, and I know uh, sort of approximately how long I'm going to sort of play for on stage, but that's the important thing. Right, what is, what, what's brought you back? Uh, are you short of money or are you short of the feeding off live audience bit? I'm short of England, more than anything else. In what way? I mean, you do know that the England you left two years ago is not the England you're going to come back to. Yeah, well, this Thursday is, is nothing like last Thursday, but it's just as important. I'd miss it if it wasn't after Wednesday. Right. Do you know that uh, the pop scene, though, at this end, the pop world has changed somewhat since you left? No, no. Have you heard of the Bay City Rollers? Yes. Well, you know that they, they are appealing to a kind of large mass hysterical audience of young people yes. who wave a lot of stuff around. Now, I wonder what kind of audience you're going to come back to face. I don't know. What do you think? 
I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in a kind of way. You may have to create a whole new scene for yourself. No. Well, I can't qualify that. I'll just come back and play my songs. Now, for someone... You, you've been quoted as saying, David, that you, for someone who's not really a very good musician, you've made mm. a, a lot of rumpus, a lot of noise. Um, yeah. If you don't think you're a good musician, what are you looking no, for at this yeah. moment? What are you searching for? Got liquid, it. Liquid. Treetop apple juice. Is it good? Would you spit some across the satellite? No. Good. Um, for someone who claims not to be all that good a musician, why are you coming back to, to perform on stage? Or have you, are you a better musician, in fact, than you admit? I can't link those two parts. If I'm not that good a musician, why am I coming back? Yes. Yes. Well, coming back has got nothing to do with being a musician. But do you think you're a better musician after two years away from... I don't from play it? anything on stage. I'm a, I'm, I'm a good performer, and I, I'm a good singer. That has nothing to do with being a musician, does it? Well, I don't know. I mean, you must it tell... It might do. You must tell me that. I mean, it's such a profound statement. I don't think I can... I can... Well, what, it doesn't have to be that one-sided, does it? Well, well... Aren't well, you going to contribute? A little bit, yes. I'm, I'm worming away by expensive satellite. Now, okay. well, all right. Now, you, 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 you've also said that you need to astound people. You don't want to come back just as an ordinary person doing an ordinary gig at the Odeon Hammersmith or wherever it is. Do you, do you have any idea at this stage, apart from just getting out on the stage, how you shall astound us? Or does it actually come to you in the middle of the night before? I shall probably be a lot fatter than I've been. That'll be my... No, I haven't any thoughts about that at all. The, imp the impact of the show has to be the astounding thing, not, not the dressing of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Dressing of a show is just a dressing. It's uh, a sort of a perfunctory kind of thing. But the, the content has to astound. I mean, you can dress a show with a, a trillion dollars or trillion pounds worth of uh, goodies, but if the show is not uh, uh, substantial, there will be no impact. In, in, you your, in your memory, what, what, is the mo yeah. what is the best thing you've done on, uh, on any stage, anywhere, that still lives with you, that you measure, use as a measuring stick? Best, best it's, that's very hard. One of the most exciting things I did was work with uh, old Lindsay, Lindsay Kemp, back in um, the, the uh, where would it be? I can't remember which theatre we did it in, but years ago. Well, it was a combined sort of mixed media show. That was very good. And it didn't, it didn't have to be a big, glossy, exciting thing. I mean, it was a small, but something important mm. to you. Well, yes, yes, of course. Right. Now, you've just finished making the film called The Man Who Came to Earth. Fell to Earth. Fell to Earth, I beg your pardon. Uh, one of the th it's, a, it's not an easy film to explain to people who haven't seen it, and, and it's not yet no. finished, is it? Um, it's finished in, uh, in visual, but it's not finished in sound. I've got to uh, record. Um, the sound. We've written a lot of it. It's, I tell you, all I can tell you is it's a, a love story more than uh, anything else. It's very, very sad, very romantic. It brought a lump to my throat watching it. Um, and it's been uh, uh, a gas working on it. Yeah. How, how, it, sorry, how much of a new, yeah. uh, how, did, how easily did you take the discipline of, of filmmaking, which is, um, as we all know, a hard. Oh. Quite easily. I'm, I'm a very disciplined person, you know. Uh, it was, uh, it was um, exciting for me to, to work with other people who are as disciplined as I am. But are you, I mean, are you being absolutely accurate and honest when you say you're a disciplined person? Oh, yes. You, you impose a, a, a discipline on your own music writing, on your own work, do you? I mean, you don't just get up when you... You know, you know, you know what I'm saying to you. A lot of people in your position yeah, have a kind a of... Mm. A discipline doesn't mean that you, you make sure that you um, have breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning right. and you are out of the house by half past 8. Uh, discipline is that you, if you uh, uh, conceive something, then you decide whether or not it's worth following through. And if it's worth following through, then you follow it through to its logical conclusion Good. and do it with the best of, to the best of your ability. That's the discipline. Yes? I applaud that answer. Whether, whether there are areas in it that are not to one's liking, you have to go right the way through it and do it, and that's what I do.
And more important, yeah. they're not to other people's liking. I mean, there are often things that if you decide to do as a major star, you're going you're well, to get people worked up about. Yes. Because you don't appear at the right place at the right time, or, or imagination is drying up and you need something else to, to refuel it. It's because I thoroughly enjoy l looking at myself and looking at the environment that I'm in at any time with the eyes of someone who's not involved in, in any particular line of the arts. So it, it comes out as a sort of eclectic uh, manifestation, you know. So I'm a, still a fan of everything, fan of films, fan of records, fan of rock bands and fan of yours. Well, that m most kind I am of a fan of yours. Great you really? fan of yours. Well, yeah. talk, let's get back to eclectic manifestations. Now, the film, uh, can we, we're, we're going to look at a bit, a bit of it, uh, for, and then we'll talk a bit more about it. Here you are, having okay, fallen to Earth, and, and as you're adjusting to the Earth's atmosphere, you gain the attention of a young lady in your hotel room. I must say, just before you put that on, it's assumed that I'm uh, um, an, uh, an alien from out of space. It's not necessarily true. All right, fine, we'll come back to that. And then, when I was 15, I worked in this pharmacy in a hospital, delivering medicines to all the floors. It was a real responsible job. Boy, you're really hooked on water, aren't you? One of these days, you ought to try one of these. Am I talking too much? Maybe I ought to go. Oh, Lord, it's after three. I guess you're tired. Well, I'll just finish this up, and then... And then? And then I think I'll have another one. You know, I really like you, mister. What do you do? For a living, I mean. Oh, I'm just visiting. Oh, a traveler. Could you help me out, please? Sure. Uh -huh. Oh. You know, mister, I don't think you get enough to eat. If you don't mind my saying so, I think you're too thin. You're very thin. You're too thin! Do you come from a city? No, no I come from the country. Ah, uh, I wish I lived in the country. You know, this is a very unhealthy place. Water here is all polluted. They put all kinds of chemicals in it to keep people from getting sick. It's a very unhealthy place. I think it just takes getting used to, that's all. It sure does. Anyway. I, I wonder I wonder if you'd mind, Mary Lou, if I rested now. <laughs> Lord, no. I was just leaving anyway. I'll come back and see you tomorrow if you want me. I'd like to see you tomorrow. Perhaps you could arrange to bring me a television. TV? Nothing easier. Well, I'll be seeing you then, Mr... Sussex. Sussex. I don't know why, but I'll never be able to remember that name. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Mary Lou. Thank you. You're welcome. David, um, uh, th that film is not finished. It's not finally edited and ready yet. But there already is seeping through it kinds of areas of mystery. A lot of it's mysterious. Is that quite deliberate? Mm. Yes, it is a mystery. As love affairs generally are. Is it giving too much away to say that it's a, a desire, uh, that it doesn't end too happily either? 
It's a very sad film. It, no, it's not a it's not a happy ending. Did you? I thought Candy Clark isn't Candy Clark good? Very good indeed. Excellent. Has she, has she worked there in films before? Uh, the last thing that she was in was American Graffiti. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but but did you yourself, were you yourself a contributory factor to the film? I mean, did Mr. Rhodes <coughs> stop and say, which way do we go, which way do we move, what do you think? Or were you under total direction? No, my, uh, under total direction, my, my, my contributing factor was my acting and uh, persona in general. I'm, um, I've got the greatest respect for Mr. Rogue and his work. I, I would not have do done the film mm. otherwise. You're in, are you still in? to the extraterrestrial bit? Are you still aware of forces apart from satellites that are moving around this, this globe or this planet or around you, David Bowie? Of course, yes. What kind of yeah. eclectic manifestation do you have of this? Um, a mountain or a tree is the manifestation of forces that we are not capable of dealing with. Do you go to church at all? No. Do you, do you I, I pray? Yes, of course. But do you pray to mountains and to trees and to those physical manifestations or to some kind of spirit? I don't think I would like to get into that over a 20-minute interview. You wouldn't? When I come back to England, I would talk to you about that, yes. All right, fine. At length. Fine. But I wouldn't like to nutshell it. Has the, has the film, uh, that's sensible, has the film um, whetted your appetite for making more movies? No, funnily enough, what it did do was uh, increase my appetite for going back to a lot of the uh, um, bits and pieces I used to do many years ago, like painting, writing, spending free time with myself and uh, my family, um, getting out of cities. And relaxing a lot. No, not relaxing so much as uh, feeling at ease. Yeah. Well, can, we yes. can, you, can I let you feel at ease for, 50, for a, a second or two while we take a commercial break at this end? Uh, well, and we'll, pick, we'll come back to in, in about two minutes' time. Meanwhile, stay okay. tuned. Welcome back, David Bowie, sitting on, on some strange beachside back of you in uh, Burbank, Los Angeles. Uh, we were talking about films and filmmaking. One of the people I presume you would have liked to have worked with would have been Piero Pasolini. Would I? Well, you, you, people, I've read that, that in odd, odd interviews you've given to people, you found his work exciting. I can't think of working with anybody apart from Nicholas Rogue at the moment. I've never done a film. I don't know when I'll do another film. And for me, it's not a question of getting into films. It was something um, tangible and, and tactile for me to work in. And it was an experience that I needed. Mm. I'm not sure whether I like uh, uh, the idea of becoming an actor. Well, you don't, I presume per you're... Se. Per se. Per se, rather than per me. You are in yeah. that kind of privileged position, though, aren't you, David, where you don't have to make any kind of decision like that, do you? Oh, I have to make as many decisions as anybody else every day. Yes, I do have to make decisions. But you, I consider you, myself fairly responsible. I presume yeah, I wasn't doubting your your own self responsibility, but I'm saying you are better equipped than most people to make that kind of firm decision about your own future. I will do. That's I will not do. what you said at all. This is what <laughs> I meant. If it's if it's, it's ah, ah if it's not what I said, right, it's I what understand. I meant, right? Yes, I can make firm decisions. I mean, you're equipped with, with uh, fame, you're equipped with a certain amount of fortune, you're equipped with, I presume, the kind of advisors who will give you good advice, and therefore you're not like a girl or a boy sitting in a basement in Notting Hill struggling to get into some kind of proper situation who wants to be an actor, who wants to be a film star, who wants to get onto the scene. I was, though. Can you remember those days? Yes, very much. I'm doing all the things I used to do in those days. But you see, that's what, that's what perhaps makes you better than you would otherwise be, because you can remember that kind of hard discipline and that kind of hard time. Uh, yeah. But now you're in a position to enjoy it. Yes. Are, are you enjoying today? Are you enjoying this conversation? I think it's wonderful. <laughs> I do enjoy it. No, I enjoy it a lot. I do, I, it's a sh shame it's so short, because uh, these days I'm very careful about uh, launching into 
sort of... I've noticed that. Discuss. It's only because I like conversation a lot, and it seems such a waste to just, uh, you know, fire away at random. Right. Do it, you, this is lovely, though. Do you... I think it's moving at a very sensible pace. Good. And also, I'll tell you what I quite like, which I shouldn't like. I mean, do, doing this conversation at a distance of X thousand miles... It's odd, uh, isn't it? It's very odd, but I, I, I don't mind you not answering questions. I mean, there are about five difficult questions I've thrown at you. Yes, and I'm happy, it's, it's that you, the, I'm happy that you don't give the answers to them, because you're quite right. It's the lack of time. It's the lack of time. Right. You know, since you were on, this, uh, on these shores before also, you, your missus, your Angie, was, has been a guest on my show and created a reasonable stir. She was lovely. I saw it. I, I had a, a, a copy sent over to me. Lovely. She was very good. And she wore a big hat with a lot of things on it. Yeah. And I suspect, is she at this side of the Atlantic now? Is she here? Is she in London? She's in Switzerland, um, I'm looking for a house. For the both of you? Because, yes, we shall stay there for a little while whilst we're touring Europe. Do you, if she's going to see this programme, which for she will... For the three of us. For three of us. And for Zoe, Zoe. How do you say it? Yes. How old is he now? Zoe. How old is he now? Well, he's four and a half, coming up for five in sort of May. And does he go to play school or whatever it is? Yes. Yes. Is he bright? University. <laughs> yes, he's... <laughs> is he, does he know he's who... He's very bright. Does he know who he's you are? He's a child. I mean, he's as bright as uh, any child should be at four and a half. He's, uh, he's not a prodigy of any kind, thank God. Yet? Yet. Give him time, baby. Give him time. You know also, d d since you've been away, or quite recently, the newspapers have been having a, a bit of a bash at your mother. And saying that she's she's a bit tearful from time to time, and that and that uh, she's she's suffering a certain amount of anguish, and that, that she doesn't hear from you an awful lot. Is that eyewash or is it real? That's really my own business. And that's how it's going to stay, is it? Yes. I see you still have a keen sense of rumour, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> Highly developed sense of rumour. Well, David, yeah. we're, we're coming towards the end of our of our um, all too oh. brief conversation. Oh, that's a shame. I think what we might do is, is end with a, a bit of music, because uh, I, I gather that in, in your, at your end, at beautiful downtown Burbank, you have some music with you. I mean, you're not going to get up on your feet and do it, but... Uh... No, I wish I, I wish I could, actually, but time won't permit it. But I, we'll see. I know what it is. I'm very drunk in this. In what? In the bit we're going to see? What you'll see now. I was very nervous, so I, I, I had a couple of drinks, which I, I never do. I really shouldn't have. It's lovely, it's very funny. Does it show? Oh, yes. Well, let's have a look at it. The song is called uh, The Shape of Things to Come. And no, David Bowie... No, no, of course it isn't. We, we're having a preview of The Shape of Things to Come. The song is called ah. Golden Tears. Mr David Bowie, we'll years. come back to you after you we've seen the song. You did get it wrong. It's I did years. Get it. Ye years. Years. Why don't you introduce it from that end? This is David Bowie singing Golden Years from his forthcoming album, Station to Station. Begun. Nights are warm and the days are young. Last night they loved you, opening doors and pulling some strings. And you looked in time, never looked back or tall at the Don't cry, my son, don't breathe. 
my heart. Doing all right, you gotta get smart. We shall fun, we shall fun, day upon day. I believe, oh Lord, I believe all the way. Taking you nowhere Very well done. It didn't seem all that intoxicated to me. You seem to be well in control of that situation. Oh, that's my judgment. Are you a stern critic of yourself? Yes. But, but you're happy that we should all have seen that, even though you think you weren't on, on, uh, in full control of that situation? Oh, yes, of course. You were wearing a demob suit or something in that. What, what, what kind of suit was it? A suit. I oh, know, but do you, do you know what a demob suit is? Yes, yes. yes. We it's were... the kind of thing uh, people wore when they came out of armies. That's right. I mean, a lot of bags yeah. around the knees and things. Yes. No, it no was bu functional. <laughs> it was a functional suit. That well, suit was very functional. It well, was a functional suit. Right. Now, I'll tell you what, David, we've had quite a functional conversation. I mean, you, you have functioned it's at your... It's been very good. I you, liked it very much. Well, you functioned at your end, and, and the satellites functioned in the middle of the sky, and I functioned at this yeah. end, and you wore a functional earpiece, and you've had a, a functional glass of uh, whatnot at your side. And I hope the functional English functionally enjoyed this. I'm functionally sure they functionally much. well will have done. Uh, but I'm going to hold you to your promise, which is when um, you do come back, uh, we'll keep the, the airwaves open a bit longer. Most certainly. I'd right. love to do that. We won't I'd talk, appreciate that a lot. We won't talk about Andrew. We won't talk about your mother. We won't talk well, about Zoe. We'll, we'll talk about well, extraterrestrials. Well, talk, let's not plan it. The worst thing we can do is plan a conversation. Meanwhile, can I, can I wish you a happy Christmas? Let's have a telephone on the show. A, a phone and, in? Uh, have, have yes. Will you, Will you do that? I'd love to. Well, if we can get satellites across half the world, I think we can get a telephone from Clapham. I'm sure we can. Meanwhile... Yes, that would be wonderful. I'd like to do that a lot. All right. And you'll, you'll be truthful and honourable and answer every question that's put to you? I'll be David Bowie. Which is a, which is a use, useful and functional end to this interview. God bless you. Happy Christmas and good night. Thank you. I love you very much, all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, David Bowie. <laughs> David Bowie from... Burbank, Los Angeles, I can now get rid of this piece of equipment and introduce you to something completely different.